Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina wa habibina wa shafi'ina wa qa'idina wa qurrati uyunina sayyidina wa nabiyina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Allahumma iftah alayna futuh al-arifin. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana ya arhamar rahimin. Wa salli Allahumma ala sayyidina wa nabiyina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. InshaAllah, uh, today we will talk about <coughs> the female, uh, one female companion of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, Umm Sulaim bint Milhan radiyallahu anha, and a male companion, uh, Sayyidna Sa'd ibn Mu'az radiyallahu anha. So Umm Sulaim, actually when we want to talk about her, we will give uh, a hint, a short hint about her son. We will know who he is right now. So Umm Sulaim uh, bint Milhan radiyallahu anha was known to be as a blessed woman uh, who had lots of love and sincerity to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before Islam, Umm Sulaim was married to her cousin Malik ibn Nadr and they had a son, Anas ibn Malik. So this is the companion within companion whom we are going also to mention today. Um, Sulaim was from the pioneers who embraced Islam at its early time. She tried to convince her husband uh, Malik uh, to embrace Islam, but he refused. He even got very angry that she became a Muslim and that she asked her boy to repeat the Shahada after her. So he threatened her that he's going to leave them, and he did. Uh, he left them and traveled to Sham, but soon after he was killed there. And Im Sulaim was, was sad that he died without embracing this great religion. Im Sulaim took very good care of her son. She was a very caring and loving mother. She was the mother and the father to him, and she loved him so much. And he, radiallahu an, Anas, radiallahu an, talks about how great his mom was to him. But he says, the best thing his mom made for him and did for him was when she gifted him to Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be his servant. So uh, we all know that uh, Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, migrated to Medina. And when he uh, got there, uh, the people of Medina gave him gifts and uh, uh, everyone uh, uh, wanted him to be with them. But Um Sulaim took her son and he was not even 10 at that time. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, inna rijal al-ansari wa nisa'ahum qad athafuk. So the uh, men of Medina and their wives have given you gifted, gifts. But I don't have anything to give. I don't have anything to gift you except my son, this son. And I wish you can uh, accept him as uh, so he can serve you. So what a gift. Uh, is it a gift to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or a gift to her son Anas radiallahu an, to live in the house of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the true mom. She cared about her son. She did not care only about this dunya. Uh, she did not care about this vanishing life, but the, she cared about the life after. She cared about the eternal life. She wanted to guarantee that her son is saved in the life after. So she did him this great favor. So now Anas radiallahu an, who was so close to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he served him and he loved him a lot. And he had the blessings to live with the Prophet of Allah at his home and to learn from him. 
uh, once um, uh, um Sulaim uh, came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she said, Ya Rasulullah, make dua for, for my son. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma akthir malahu wa waladahu wa adkhilhu al-jannah. Oh Allah, make an increase in his wealth and uh, progeny and get him into paradise. And later in life, Anas radiallahu anhu said, I got the first two points uh, of this duha fulfilled and I am waiting for the third one. So, uh, so he said, I asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to, to intercede for me on the day of judgment. And he said, I am, I am the one to do so. So Anas radiallahu anhu said, oh, messenger of Allah, then where shall I seek you on the day of judgment? And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, seek me the first time you should seek me on the sirat. And Anas was a little worried. So he asked him, if I don't meet you, if I don't meet you upon the sirat, Ya Rasulullah, where, where should I look for you? And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, then seek me at the mizan, at the scale. And Anas said, and if I don't meet you at the mizan, so Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, then seek me at the hawd, for indeed, I will not be missed at these three locations. So this is, if we, have, if we have a deeper look at this hadith, at this narration, so we find that this is a lesson to each and every one of us. We all want to see Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So don't go here and there, don't look for him. We have these three locations. <clears throat> Seek these three locations. So, Anas radiallahu an was blessed to be the servant of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he gave us this secret. You know now where to look for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Anas radiallahu an was the sincere servant and the smart student. He learned a lot from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he narrated so many hadith for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, Umm Sulaim has a unique second marriage story. And on the authority of Anas radiallahu anh, he said, Abu Talha, Abu Talha proposed to my mom, to Umm Sulaim, before she embraced Islam, uh, before he, sorry, before he embraced Islam. And she said to him, as for me, I desire you. And no one like you is to be rejected. But you are not a Muslim. And I am a Muslim woman. So she, she desired him. He was a man of honor. He was a man of wealth. He was, he was a perfect man. For, to, to propose to a lady, but that did not attract her attention. So she said, aren't you ashamed that you worship a piece of wood that was engraved by a so-and-so slave? So your God cannot defend itself. How can it benefit you? How can it prevent any harm from reaching you? She added to him, she said to him, I will marry you if you become a Muslim and this will be my dowry. I don't want to anything else. I'm not asking you for anything else except to become Muslim. Abu Talha left and he thought of her words. He was a, a man of wisdom and he thought of what she told him about the God he worships. He was convinced, convinced with her words. This God that he claims to be a God cannot defend itself when, there, when uh, something would happen to him. He cannot lift himself if it fell on the ground. So how can he worship such a God? 
he was convinced with her words and he soon Im uh, immediately embraced Islam and Abu Talha married Umm Sulaim. And with this, Umm Sulaim was the first woman who made her dowry her husband's conversion to Islam. And with this, she attained the virtue that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had promised by saying, by Allah, if a single person is guided to Allah through you, it will be better for you than a whole lot of red camels, which were very expensive and valuable. So, SubhanAllah, yani, this is a lesson for each and every one of us. When you learn something about Islam and when you master it, you have to pass it to others who don't know it. You never know. Your, your words might be a reason for them to convert to Islam. Also, you're being a true Muslim. You're being a Muslim who uh, acts and who behaves like Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you, ha you show the good manners to people, to non-Muslims. And we heard so many stories of how non-Muslims be changed and convert to Islam because of the uh, uh, because of how well treated they were by Muslims. They have not seen this, these manners from people of their own religion. Or if they don't have a religion, they, they know that Islam is the perfect religion. So, the, the, so now we have to know that our actions are da'wa. Our manners are da'wa. Our, our words are da'wa. Our du'a is also da'wa. So try to be generous with all types of da'wa. And try to fulfill this du'a of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Try to be one of those people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide people through you. So Um, um Salama uh, and Abu Talha got married. And later they had a son uh, and they named him Abu Umair. This Abu Umair was a gift to the family and they loved him so much. His father loved him so much. His mom loved him so much. And uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved this boy. And uh, once uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was passing by and he found Aba Umair, Aba Umair crying. So he asked him what's, what happened? And he knew that uh, Abu Umair was crying because this, uh, uh, this boy had a birdie whose name was al -Mughair. And uh, then this uh, bird died. So Abu Umair was crying. And of course, we know Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu wa sallam, was so merciful. So he, he uh, wiped the head of this little boy and he said to him, Ya Abu Umair, ma fa'ala al-Nughayr? Oh, Abu Umair, what happened to the Nughayr? So he showed him the, the mercy he has in his heart. So when we have such... Uh, a position, such a story, we have also to, to show mercy to people. And our mercy should be uh, not only to, to the old, but also to the, to the kids. So by being merciful to kids, then we apply, we imitate Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, we all know how he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to love Al-Hasan and Hussein, his grandchildren. 
So he used to play with them. They used to race with him. Uh, to um, they used to wrestle with him. And uh, he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, would hold him them while uh, he's uh, praying. And he would wait for them until they get off his back when he is making sujood. So this is a type of mercy. This is a type of love to the children. This is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Um Sulaim radiallahu anha uh, used to, to, to take advantage of any chance that she can use to uh, serve Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, it was uh, mentioned that whenever Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, got married, she used to uh, make food for him and uh, to, uh, she used to send it with Anas, her son, and so that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, would have a, will have a party for, uh, for the wedding and uh, he would uh, call his uh, companions to eat uh, for, for, for this party. So uh, in return, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, used to come and uh, uh, visit them all the old ways. He, he, he loved this family. He loved Umm Sulaim. He loved Anas and uh, Abu Talha. And they were special to him. So Umm Sulaim, uh, uh, was, as I mentioned, a very smart and uh, wise woman. Uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught her that with love, there is dua. And dua is the weapon of the Muslim. So he told to her, Ya Umm Sulaim, إِذَا صَلَّيْتِ الْمَكْتُوبَ When you pray the uh, fard, then say, Subhanallah ashra. Subhanallah, 10 times. Walhamdulillah, 10. Alhamdulillah, 10 times. Wallahu akbar, 10. And 10 times, Allahu akbar. Thumma salillaha ma shi'ti. And then, make whatever dua you want. Fa'innahu yuqalu laki, na'am, na'am, na'am. Then your uh, dua will be answered. So... Glad tidings, big bushra to Umm Sulaim radiallahu anha. She, what, what a gift that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given her. MashaAllah. Then later on, uh, Umm Sulaim and uh, her, her husband, uh, Abu Talha, uh, were tested. And let's see what happened to them. Their uh, very uh, loved child, Abu Umair, got sick. And every day, Abu Talha would uh, come back to ask, uh, uh, to, would come back home. He would uh, immediately ask his wife, how is, how is uh, our son doing? And she would say, uh, he's good, inshallah, and they will make dua, and uh, they would wait. Well, one day, he went out, and uh, the little boy died. He, he, his mom was caring for him, but subhanAllah, that was his uh, time and he died. His mom got so sad, but she was very patient. She accepted what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has predestined for her. So she uh, uh, got the the, 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 the the baby, she made ghusl for him and she uh, shrouded him. And she uh, uh, she was repeating, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Then she uh, looked at the ladies who were with her and she said, no one would tell Abu Talha about the death of our son except for me. 
So when Abu Talha came back uh, uh, later in the evening, she prepared the food for him. She uh, 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 she sat with him, and um, she did the same thing that she would do every day. And he asked he asked her, "How is our son doing?" And she said, "He is the best of every day." So when they had dinner. Uh, she told she uh, uh, they had good time her husband and wife good time together and he asked she asked him she said to him she wanted to tell him but she wanted to say it in a wise way so she asked him uh you know uh people of our neighborhood had uh, borrowed something from others and when uh, uh, they were asked to give it back, they refused. So he said, how bad this is? How can they do that? And she said, this is you. Your son was given to you by Allah and Allah has, has got him back. So the father was very sad. But he, he said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajihun. And he, he uh, practiced the best patience. When it was the morning, uh, Abu Talha went to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he told him what Umm Sulaim has done. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for them. And he said, Allahumma barik lahuma fi laylatihima. Oh Allah bless their night and whatever they did during that night. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, reimbursed the mom and the father and they had a, uh, a boy, a baby boy. And what, what Umm Talaha did, she did not want to breastfeed him until Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam see him and uh, give him the uh, date uh, to, to, uh, to, to try. So uh, she, she called Anas and she sent uh, his brother with him with some dates and she asked, asked him to uh, 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 to give uh, his brother to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Anas did so. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chewed the uh, dates and he put them in the mouth of the little baby. So uh, he, he, uh, he ate, he, he, tried, he tested them and he loved the, the dates that he had in his mouth. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أَبَتِ الْأَنصَارُ إِلَّا حُبَّ التَّمْرِ The uh, Ansar, the people of Medina, they, they would love dates. So he, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wiped the head of the baby and he named him Abdullah. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fulfilled the uh, dua of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this baby was of the best Muslims. He had seven children and all of his children were uh, hafiz of the Quran. So uh, this was uh, Musulaim radiallahu anha. So the, the main features of her uh, character were uh, the, the wisdom uh, she had such, uh, much wisdom and uh, reason, and we saw how she convinced Abu Talha to convert to Islam. She was also so courageous and so brave. She used to go to the battles with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and she had so many uh, stories. One of them on the day of Hunayn is uh, Abu Sulaim took a dagger with her, and Abu Talha saw her, and he said to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is Umm Sulaim, she's holding a dagger. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at her, and he said, why are you holding this dagger, Umm Sulaim? So she said, I, look, I took it, so uh, I took it up so that uh, uh, I may uh, tear open the belly of a policist, uh, a policist if, if he comes near me. She was very courageous. And of course, 
uh, one of her characters also was uh, she, she loving the uh, Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and tracing his trail in everything. Uh, there is a narration by Anas radiallahu anh, that uh, um, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, once uh, used to sleep in their house and um, one time uh, he slept and uh, uh, so so he he got a nap at uh, his mom's house and uh, once uh, she came uh, to her house she found Sayyid Muhammad sallallahu sweet is sweating and his sweat falling on the leather cloth uh, she spread on her bed so uh, she opened her scent bag and began to fill the bottle with it, with the sweat of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam woke up, he, he uh, looked at her and he said, Umm Sulaim, what are you doing? She said, Allah's Messenger, we are seek, you know, we, we, we seek blessings for our children through this. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you have done the uh, something right. Also, um, Oh, um, Sulaim. Oh, there are so many stories about Um Sulaim. I think we uh, need to go move to our next uh, next uh, companion. But let me end uh, with this one. So, uh, Um Sulaim was a very knowledgeable woman, and she narrated a hadith of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and she was known for this knowledge. And people would come and ask her for some jurisprudence uh, questions. And of her virtue is the what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about her: "دخلت الجنة فسمعت خشفة فقلت من هذا." قالوا هذه الغميصاء بنت ملحان أم أنس بن مالك خشفة in the uh, خشفة in the in the Arabic language is uh, the walking and its sound. So Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said, I entered paradise and I heard the noise of steps. So I said, who is this? And they said she is أم uh, she is الغميصاء daughter of ملحان the mother of Anas بن مالك. May Allah uh, make us all like her, uh, uh, the best mom, the best lover to see the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and may Allah make us give us the guidance to raise our children exactly like she did. Uh, she guaranteed the akhirah for her children. She, she guaranteed the next life for her, for for her child for Anas, and uh, this is how we all need to be. We'll move on to our next companion, Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh. And uh, we know that Sayyidina Sa'ad uh, uh, was, uh, uh, well, uh, his, his Islam story is very unique. He uh, was uh, about um, 30 years old. So he went to Mus'ab ibn Umair and he was uh, sitting with uh, some of the um, uh, people of Medina talking about Islam and reading or reciting Quran to them. So uh, Sa'ad ibn Mu'az went to them. He was uh, um, uh, holding his spear. He wanted to, he was, he was angry. He wanted to get them expelled out of Medina. So uh, uh, he... Uh, As'ad ibn Zurara, who was sitting with Sayyidina Musa ibn Umair, uh, so, so Sa'ad ibn Mu'ayah is coming uh, angry. And he told him, hey, Musa, uh, 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 the chief of his uh, tribe is coming. Now, if you can, uh, if you succeed to make him uh, embrace Islam, then all his tribe will, will become Muslim. So uh, he arrived, he, he got to, Sa to Musab and he uh, told him and uh, to Asad, Asad ibn Zurara, they were together as I mentioned. He said, Ya Aba Umama, law ma bayni wa baynaka min al qarabati ma rum to hatha minni, ma rum to hatha minni, atarshana fi dia fi darina bima nakra. 
if you were not uh, of my kinship, then I would have done something else. You you talk about what we uh, disbelieve and what we hate in uh, among our people. Sab ibn Umayyah was so calm and he said, oh, Why you don't sit? And you listen to it. you listen. If you hear something uh, you accept, you you like, then you uh, uh, it will be good. If you if you feel that uh, it's uh, you hate what you are what you are going to listen, then we will stop uh, talking about it. So, uh, Saad was a very wise man. I said, fair enough. So he put his spear on the ground and he sat down. And Mus'ab, radiallahu anhu, uh, uh, talked to him about Islam. And he read the first few, three ayahs of Surah Al-Zukhruf. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hamim wal kitab al Inna ja'alnahu Qur'anan arabiyan la'allakum ta'qilun. So he said, uh, of course, these are the three, the the, uh, uh, the haruf that are, um, we, we, we do not um, try to get an uh, explanation for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the explanation. So he is, he gave a, a, uh, an oath by the clear book. And he is swearing by the Quran. Uh, Indeed, we have made it an Arabic Quran that you might understand. We know that each and every messenger, when he came to his people, uh, he found he he was uh, given the miracle of the people. So, Sayyidina Musa, his people were uh, so famous for sorcery and. Uh, uh, magic, so he 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 was given this uh, talent. See, the Muhammad sallallahu his people were very well known by the Arabic language. So the Quran, uh, Subhanallah, was a challenge for them. Even if they were so fluent in Arabic, they could not they could not get one ayah that resembles the Quran. So this was their challenge. And uh, Saad was very smart, so he knew that this is not, even if it's the Arabic language, then it's not something that anyone can say. This shouldn't be a human talk. So Saad, radiallahu uh, was delighted. And it was shown on his face. So when... Uh, and this is why they say, uh, whatever state your heart feels, it will show on your face. And we always hear that the, uh, uh, this face, this person has a radiant face because he has light in his heart. And this light comes from the Quran the light of Allah, the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the love of the Quran, the love of Allah, the love of, of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's very important to work on our hearts. So now, uh, Sa'ad ibn Mu'az had heard three ayahs and he became a Muslim. So Asad said, We knew that he became a Muslim before he says anything. So he said to them, What do you do if you want to be Muslim? So they said, You wash, you uh, purify yourself, you purify your cloth, and you say the shahada. You pray to Rakaz, and that's it. So he did, and he took his spear and went back to his people, and he called them, Ya Bani Abd al-Ashhal. He called his people, Bani Abd al-Ashhal, all of them. So how do you know me? He said, 
you are our master. We haven't seen anyone who is wiser, wiser than you. We trust you. We believe in you. So he said, I am not going to talk to any one of you. Everything is haram for me until you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. So until the evening, there was not a single man or a woman in his tribe except they become Muslim. So this was the life of Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Mu'az. He changed and he became a very good Muslim. And he would uh, give victory to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we all know that uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Medina. And Sa'ad was uh, uh, one of them. Uh, Sa'ad was um, uh, with the uh, Sahaba. They accepted the Muslims and they, uh, they were so good to them. And he had very good and strong positions with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu So where, for example, when it was the second year of Hijra, we all know that Ghazb uh, better took, uh, took uh, place in that year. So in that, um, Sayyidina, for, in that, for that occasion, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, getting, uh, was counseling with his companions about whether to go for the battle, was but better or not. So the, those who migrated with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up and talked and uh, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr talked well, Sayyidina Umar talked well, but Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was waiting. So until it was Sa'ad's uh, uh, he understood the message. So he stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, ka'annaka turiduna. So we, and uh, as I just mentioned, Sa'ad was the uh, uh, leader of his uh, uh, people and his people received Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina. So Sayyidina Muhammad said, yes. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, we believed in you and we trust you. We witness that what you came with is the truth. And we gave you our uh, promises, our uh, confidence that we are going to obey you. So you might say, uh, uh, you might be afraid that we won't fight, but we are fighting with you. We are Rasulullah. So do whatever you want. We are with you. Fight whoever you want. We are with you. Uh, have peace with whoever we want. you want. We are with you. Take from our money whatever you want. We will give you whatever you, you need. And anything, anything you want, we are with you. So... If you, if you uh, go into uh, this uh, sea, if you uh, go into the sea, we would go into it with you. None of us would, be, uh, would, would stay behind. We are with you, so do whatever you want to do, and we are all depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine these words, these powerful words, these strong words that uh, 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 manifest uh, the, the, the uh, and talks about the character of Sayyidina Sa'ad radiallahu Then uh, uh, it was Ghazwit Uhud. And uh, Sayyidina, Muhammad, uh, Sayyidina Sa'ad radiallahu anh, was with those who stayed, uh, who were uh, fast with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and who fought very strongly. And um, uh, this was uh, uh, the uh, position of Sayyidina, Sayyidina Sa'ad. So, uh, he would he would be very supportive to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
then what happened يعني سيدنا سيدنا سعد سبحان الله was uh, was very uh, well uh, what was the wisest person among his his tribe and he as i mentioned had so many uh, good positions with sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there are so many stories which prove how sayyidna muhammad sayyidna sa'ad was with uh, with people around him uh, sayyidna sa'ad was uh, wounded in uh, 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 what he was fighting and uh, sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, yeah he Uh, came to Sayyidina Sa'ad before his death and he was the last one that Sa'ad radiyallahu an it was the last face that he saw was the face of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so he said to him assalamu alayka ya rasulullah ama inni ashhadu innaka la rasulullah أما إني أشهد أنك رسول الله السلام عليكم يا حبيبي يا رسول الله I witness that you are the uh, messenger of Allah so uh, at night uh, جبريل عليه السلام uh, uh, came to سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said to him who يا محمد Who was that righteous slave who just passed away? The doors of the skies were open and the throne of Allah shook at his, at, at, at his death. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu knew that it was sad. He went uh, uh, immediately went to his house and he found he found him dead. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for him. And uh, uh, so you know that uh, Jibreel alayhi salam gave the news of sad death to, to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he told him that the throne of Allah shook at the death of Sa'ad, of, of, of this person, of righteous person. So imagine yani, uh, how, how dear to, uh, how, a good, how good Sa'ad was so that the throne of Allah would shake for his death. SubhanAllah. So, Bushra, Bushra, like, ya, ya, Sa'ad ibn Mu'az. And uh, people, people went to the janazah of Sa'ad, uh, radiyallahu an, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who uh, um, helped uh, withholding him until he, uh, he, wa, he, uh, he got him buried in Al-Baqiyah, Jannatul Baqiyah. So, So they said that the, the, uh, the, the, his body was so light and they haven't uh, heard, uh, helped any, anyone who was lighter than him. Uh, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, radiyallahu an, he helped with uh, digging the grave of Sayyidna, Sayyidna Sa'ad and uh, he said, كنت أنا ممن حفر لسعد قبره بالبقيع وكان يفوح علينا المسك كلما حفرنا قطرة من تراب حتى انتهينا إلى اللحد So he said, Abu Sa'id said, I was uh, of those who, who digged uh, uh, the, the grave of Al-Baqiyah. I helped uh, with that. And whenever we would dig some, uh, dig uh, a little bit, then the misk Uh, scent would would come out until we uh, we got into his the place where he was uh, uh, buried. Uh, 
So, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after, uh, after Sa'ad radiallahu anhu was uh, buried, he said, هذا الذي تحرك له العرش وفتحت له أبواب السماء وشهده سبعون ألفا من الملائكة. So, uh, لقد ضم ضمة ثم فرج عنه. This is the one who... Uh, who, uh, to, to, for whom the uh, throne of Allah was shook for his death, the doors of the skies were open, and 70,000 uh, angels uh, attended his uh, uh, funeral. So with all of that, he was... Uh, um, uh, uh, any, the, 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 when they put him in the grave, there was uh, some hardship, and then it was all clear for him. So if there is, if there is anyone to be saved of this, then it would be Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Mu'az. So everyone would know that there is a crush in the, in the grave. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, uh, was uh, came back, and uh, everyone was repeating "Inna Lillah wa Inna Ilayhi Rajiun." So Sayyid Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used always to uh, uh, mention and remember Sad and to speak well about him, and this was. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Sayyidina Saad, uh, he, he, there are so many uh, bounties for him and a lot of rewards for him in uh, Al Jannah. And uh, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he, all of it was mentioned by Sayyidina Muhammad. This was Sayyidina Saad. Uh, this was Sayyida uh, Umm Sulaim bint Malhan. So uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have to, to reunite us with them in the day after to uh, under the uh, flag of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is our goal in this dunya, to hear about the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to learn from their stories. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته